What's up, guys? Welcome back to The Money Is Show. And today on the episode, we have a, a business owner that uh, has started and created a couple hundred million dollar businesses. And we're going to ask him a ton of questions on how to start a business, how do you grow a business to a hundred million dollars, how do you take over an entire town, how do you employ uh, half the town. we got a lot of questions for this guy on this episode. So uh, again, you guys welcome Al Don on the show. Hey! Al, appreciate you being on the show, man. Oh, thanks, man. It's good to be uh, here. Uh, fortunately, you were doing some skiing uh, yeah. in town because uh, you're from Missouri. Yeah, yeah. Or, or live there now. No, I uh, live there. When I, yeah, when I get out here, I try and get up there, man. But it, this, the weather did not cooperate. Yeah, it was been a kind of a weird year for skiing. I heard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I do. Uh, I don't do skiing because I'm from Georgia, so this is my first like like winter here. Like no, all, right, all really? new to me, right? Yeah. Because uh, in Georgia, if it. Do you love it? it well, great? in Georgia, if if we even talk about snow, people freak out. Like they're like, it could possibly snow tomorrow. Literally, like grocery stores would be like bombarded with like yeah. and the milk and bread is gone. It's like why milk and bread? Like I'll take the the Doritos, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, and the queso is what I'm looking for. Give me some Rolos. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So I started mountain biking, which is because the mountains oh, are like yeah. right here. It's freaking, I'm addicted to mountain biking. And then when I'm mountain biking, uh, I'm like, man, it, it's like fall time. I'm like, man, we're gonna run out of rides. And the and my buddy who who got me into it was like, like oh no, dude, we, we can go snow mountain biking. No. And I'm like, do what? He's no, like, hey, you don't want to do that. You do snow mountain biking. And no. So, oh, I'm all in, bro. <laughs> have uh, you done it? Oh, yeah, I love it. No. It's actually better than mountain biking. Snow mountain biking. I have these e-bikes that have these big ass tires and grips and stuff. Oh, it's so Wait, fun. Wait, you take an e-bike on the mountain? On the mountain, snow biking. <laughs> so you don't have to pedal. Oh, no, there's no Is way. <laughs> there's no way I'm going to pedal. It's basically like a motorcycle, electric yeah, motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Right, mountain biking. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's how I do my good. exercise. Yeah. Is by. <laughs> Pushing a throttle on, yeah, my, yeah. E on my e-bike. <laughs> you and turn the uh, treadmill on, then go sit down. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I turn it on and then yeah. leave. And uh, yeah, so yeah, snow's new to me, I guess. But um, no, Missouri, we've got we got a ton of snow and it, all the cold, but none of the benefits. There's no there's yeah. no mountains to go it's down. Like flat. Yeah, it's it's uh, so we just get a, it's just a hard cold. Yeah, just so, a nasty cold there. Yeah, uh, which is probably why football is so important there. <laughs> it's what you guys live for. Oh yeah, no, the, the true <laughs> test of manhood yeah. is can you catch an ice ball in the in the snow? Uh, that's it, dude. So look, I, I want to go through this with you. Uh, first of all, give me a little bit of background here. Tell me a little bit about. I know you got these hundred million dollar companies, but tell me a little bit about starting growing up. What was it like growing up, Al? Did you grow up with money, without money? What was that family like growing up with Al? No, yeah, uh, my relationship to money growing up, money was uh, money was the punisher, right? Okay. It was the it was the one that. Like I couldn't play t-ball because we couldn't afford the twenty dollars. I wasn't allowed to play basketball because we couldn't join. You know, like money was the thing that kept us from doing anything good or fun, <laughs> which is which you know today manifests itself in a lot of weird ways. But like growing up, man, we we grew up poor. Um, my dad, my dad, the hardest worker you ever knew. Like I think a lot of people have a dad like this, yeah. where like, dude, wake up at four in the morning. You know, do some chores, get yeah. out, get out the door by five, get to work. Like, never missed a day of work no. in his life, sort of thing, and uh, and like, you, you know, and so watching him was how I learned how work was supposed to be done. Like work ethic, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and so like that was my that was my growing up. He was he was gone working really hard for us. Like, loved to come home, loved his kids, loved his family, but like was always fighting overtime to try and get enough time to be home. Uh, and so we grew up, I mean, as kids, it was our job to take care of the house, take care yeah. of the farm, all the chores, all that kind of stuff. We had a lot of responsibility early on. And, uh, and we loved it. We, we, we moved from California to Missouri when uh, I was 13 and, and went from the land of like strip malls and cement. That's, yeah. My memory of California is not Venice Beach. Right, right. It's an hour inland <laughs> with all cement and asphalt. <laughs> and uh, and that, like, that's it. And I got to Missouri where it's lakes and rivers and streams and the land is cheap and you can afford to live and it's it was this like god send us and so i was uh huckleberry finn for yeah. you know my growing up and just loved it man we we uh restored an old house and like made it our own it was just a blast it was a great way to grow up and uh, you talk about how it's funny how money manifests uh, di in different ways yeah. later on in life you know what i mean like, like you talk about your, how your dad and you're right like i think so many dads especially as i interview people so many dads I hear that same story, yeah. like, oh, dude, my dad did it, which was my dad, right? Like, the guy was, like, signing up for overtime yeah, because we had to have the money. And yeah, begging for it. Oh, I got some. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And it was like, a, it was like a, um, a, a happy moment in my mom. I remember seeing as a kid, like, my mom and dad's life, because we grew up poor, when my dad's like, oh, hey, I think there's going to be a 7 seven twelve coming up, which is seven days and 12-hour yeah. shifts. And it was like, he was pumped. <laughs> 
because he was like going to go seven days a week for 12 hours a day working Can to make imagine? a little bit of extra money. Yeah. And then the cool thing about it was I just love kind of the childhood there was, but my parents were totally focused on the kids. Yep. Like all the money that my dad made was for the children. Like whatever, we, and it wasn't a lot still. Yeah, was saving up to get a hockey stick yeah. or something, right? Exactly. Yeah. It was like that him and my mom had like nothing. And we're totally okay with it. Yep. Like, it didn't even dawn on them to go buy themselves something. It was like, uh, like you said, like, oh, it's T ball time. Andrew's got to have a new glove, you know, or, or you know, grew it to Little yep. League now. And it's like, okay, we got to go find a way to get this done. And it, it's cool. And then it manifests later in that a lot of people that watch the show know uh, I ended up creating wealth. And then I went and retired my mom and dad. Uh, you know, whatever it was 20 years later. I did the same thing, man. Talked my dad into quitting his job at the newspaper. Which was hard. It did, yeah. <laughs> Mine was, I had to trick my dad into it. Uh, it's a funny story we could probably tell it one day, but your story is somewhat similar yeah. in what, how you did. And that's kind of how you started your first business was a little bit more for your mom. Yeah, no. The, for the sake of it. Go through that one. Dude, the angle. So we started a quilt company for my, for my mom. It was, me and my sister, Sarah, we were worried that, uh, that mom was going to like live in our basement when she got old, right? right. Like, they, they, my parents are, are pretty bad with money, yeah. right? Like, they're, they, uh, the, the fundamentals that are going to make you fiscally responsible, they, they didn't have. Like, they were, they're good with it in that they, like, they try really hard, but the... Well, so I think it's the majority of yeah, Americans, though. Yeah, they just, they just, they miss it a little bit, and so, like, money, money for them was also the punisher, yeah. right? And uh, bills were scary, they never had enough, and so, you know, fast forward 20 years, and it's like, man, the... They don't have a house when dad can't swing a hammer. Like they That's don't it. have anything. They're going to be living with us. And so what do we, how can we create some stability for them? Right. Help pay off the house, give them a life that'll, that'll take care of them. So that's what we started out focusing on, looking for something that was going to open that door. And, um, and mom, she called me one day and was talking about like, she'd made a quilt for my sister who had a baby. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's great. And she's like, yeah, I'll get it back in a year. I was like, a year. <laughs> A year. There is nothing that you should, like, we can build a house faster yeah, than that. Yeah, like, exactly. what are you taking a year to do? Uh, and she's like, oh, well, everybody's just super backed up. And uh, so that was my market research moment. I was like, wait, can you do it if I got you a machine? She said, yeah, I think I could. I was like, great, then we'll take half a year's worth of uh, demand away from these other ones. There's plenty of room. Like, you jump in there, and this will we'll make 10 grand a month. I'll get a little bit. Sarah gets a little bit for, you know, for the risk of buying the stuff. And then mom gets you know, a couple grand and she's paying off the house and this is a great way for her to make some extra money. I, I love it because it, to me, it's like, that is business 101. And sometimes, a lot of times, people get caught on an idea. I had this long conversation with a guest one time and it was actually one of his big points was he's like, I think people in entrepreneurship fall in love with their idea hmm. and their idea actually has no value, but they're in love with their idea. Yeah, well, hey, let's come up with a billion dollar idea google version two it's billion yeah, yeah. dollars go do it fall in yeah. love with this idea where his whole point was like just go find the the lack the opportunity the, uh, of the market and let the market produce the idea if you will yeah. and then go fill that need and you will create a business which is a, so much what you did right there what it wasn't like you're for the audience's sake is it wasn't like you were some crazy quilter that just loved quilting on your free time no, no. When, and that's why you started a quilting company i mean no i i wasn't but like i i had done the thing i remember i i have this memory of coming home from college right yeah and i was getting ready to graduate and i came home for christmas and i sat on the couch and i said i need a million dollar idea yeah yeah i need a million dollar idea and i like nothing right, right it's nothing. crickets and you're <laughs> like gosh dang it like how, how do i do this and then I start this little quilt company that's never going to be anything. And right. it's going to be small. And we're just a little shop in a town of a thousand people. Like it's, it, there's 3000 of these across America. We're 3001. Right. And uh, it's never going to do anything. And that's the one that turned into the, the big multi-million dollar monster. And your next business was kind of birthed on the same concept of so seeing the opportunity. Yeah. And then said, wait a second. There, there's an opportunity. I could, I can do that. I can fill that gap void, if you will, and I can create a business out of it, and then it explodes again. Yeah. So the the quilt company we ran for uh, a decade, so ten years, yeah. and uh, it got, it's it's big. We still own it all. Uh, it's doing great. And then we stepped back to the board and uh, gave ourselves a little bit of a breather. You know, the the burnout is real, man. It's crazy, yeah. especially when you bootstrap it from the beginning, right? Because uh, when you're bootstrapping and growing, you do you do every eight-hour job, right? And you'll stack them on top of yourself where you're doing like five eight-hour jobs a day and, right. and before you hire somebody else to come in and, and take it over. 
So we were, we were exhausted. And then the, we, we stepped back to the board and I started looking around after a couple of months, you know, cause you get rested up and yeah, you, get you say, all, right, all right, let's do it again. And I uh, was looking around, not, not really looking, but I was shopping for watercolor paints for my wife. Right, we'd gotten married and she was into this and I was like, I'll be a sweet husband, let me buy yeah. you a thing. So I'm Googling watercolor paints and the number one, like the people that just own that space on the internet is Dick Blick, yeah. right? DickBlick.com and I'm like, man, that's a terrible name for a company. You just, you like, couldn't <laughs> think of a worse name for watercolor paints. You, you know in 1901, the guy's oh, yeah. like, we'll be Dick Blicks yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, and this is gonna be great. In 2020, like, like, bro. <laughs> That you can't be that. You cannot call your company that <laughs> name right now. That boner click. That might, no, I just <laughs> that kidding. one would work. That would no, but, but like Dick Blick is just such a such a t- terrible name. But like it's beloved. It's Blick Art Supplies, and they yeah. love them and stuff. Uh, but but as I went to buy stuff on their website, it was like nine clicks to get to a product, right? And they asked me a bunch of questions that I didn't know the answer to. And I'm like, I I'm not a dumb guy. I should be able to figure this stuff out. I, at least I think when I'm clicking through a website, I should be able to figure this out. And if I can't, they broke something. Right. right. And so nine clicks to get there, they ask me questions like, well, what style of watercolor paint? I'm like, I don't know, man. I just want the watercolor paints. And, uh, and, I, and then you get to the product and it's an RGB value. Like it's like a <laughs> spreadsheet on the internet. And I'm like, man, they're, they're building this experience for creative artists right. and they are blowing it. So uh, literally, I was like, there's an opportunity here. I got to build something. And so I uh, went and built a company called Let's Make Art. I called uh, this gal who I, I love from college. Her name's Sarah Cray, and she moved her family out. And we started this business together uh, with the goal of like, of like let's, instead of 10,000 products, we're going to have 200. Yeah. And we, we want to, when you land here, let's make it feel inspirational and like, and like sort of creative and exciting and then show you exactly what you need to be successful. And it's awesome, man, because like, like I'm not an artist, right? I right. can't draw a straight line with a ruler. And if I sit down and follow through one of the 45 minute tutorials with her, and it's like, that's a sea turtle. That actually <laughs> looks pretty good. And I yeah, hang yeah. it on my wall. I'm like, I can't believe I did that. But, but the goal with any of, our, any of the things that I've done is like get you to a feeling of success, show you that you can do it, where everybody else I feel like makes their makes their business around sort of gatekeeping and uh-huh. you're the special ones who bring you in but everybody else isn't as cool and I'm like no 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 man let's get everybody in here I promise I'll give you your money back if you can't paint that line right right, right? like you can do this and uh, so we make it super beginner friendly very sort of creative and inspirational and that one did great man it, it sh- just a little rocket ship it's crazy right? and uh, went to went to like one and a half million dollars in ARR in four months completely bootstrapped we did it on 30 grand that we put in and just grew it into this thing and that was and then like just kept going with it and it's done awesome with with both these companies just for the audience sake here this ballpark how many employees staff uh whatever would you say contractors that you guys work with what, what are you looking so, at? so we're about 500 employees between them all between, between, all, between the different companies yeah well so so it's interesting the missouri star quilt company and the uh the let's make art both our own now we built a little enterprise umbrella f- called creativity inc uh-huh. And it's got a quilting company in Missouri Star. It's got an apparel and sewing company in Nancy's Notions. It's got a watercolor company in Let's Make Art. And Let's Make Art has like art journaling and kids crafting. Right. And then we did uh, One Big Happy is our yarn company and fiber arts and crafting.com. <laughs> we're getting rid of Like it's got, dude, we're just like, like the, the, the thing that I found is nobody's building cool experiences for 40 to 70 year old women, yeah. right? Like it's a forgotten demographic. Uh, and you, you know, you think of like your mom, what does she dream of going to do every year? And what is she dying to do? Nobody's building cool stuff for them yet. They're a huge driver of, of, uh, economic purchasing power and stuff, right? Like they're movers and shakers. Uh, but like, if you, if you watch TV, it's like the travel show with Mario Lopez and it's like, all right, well, my mom's not going to Miami for the club scene, like right. build a travel show for them, build yeah. content for, for this demo. And so I think I'm the only one out there trying to like delight and inspire <laughs> 40 to 70 year old women. And I'm, it, I'm it's, excited it's, to know. That'd be a great tagline for your a dating profile. Too. Oh yeah, well, that, I mean, that's why <laughs> I'm married now. Right, it right. worked. It worked. Yeah, that, yeah. I, could, I could see that I just, working. I, have you ever wanted to take a roll of fabric and run? A, <laughs> I, I'll give you that. Come to me. Yeah, yeah so with, when you build these companies, again, it's so funny because you talk about sitting there thinking of like a million dollar idea. There's no way you would convince me that when you sat down however long you were, you were 22, 23 years old, trying to come up with a million dollar idea yeah. that you would have thought, you know what, 
I think yarn is where it's at. <laughs> like that thought would have never went through your no, head. No, that, that That's where you could build a $100 million uh, empire, basically. Well, I think there's a real lesson in that, right? Of just like, uh, well, people talk about it all the time of do things that don't scale and that kind of thing. But like, yeah. I, I keep saying my next one I'm going to do, so I'm working on a, on, a, on a SaaS company, a finance app now. And I keep telling my wife, I'm like, the next one, I just want, I'm going to make pie. Yeah. I want, I want to, <laughs> And I want to make three pies a day. Yeah, only like, three. That's all I'm going to do. And I know by the end, I'll be like flash freezing these and get yeah, them all oh yeah. over America. International but like, pie company. But like, you, you just got to start with a lemonade stand that yeah. like can't go anywhere and it's never going to work and, and just kind of go riff on it and see how you if, like it. Uh, you, the, those that are watching, obviously business owners, investors, entrepreneurs, uh, if they could get some advice from someone who's built a $100 million business, which is you know pretty rare that, that someone that at that caliber will, will share information, if you will. What would you tell them on how, how, would, how, would you, how do you start, how do you build a $100 million company? So I've got, I've got like a lens that I look at this stuff through, right? And it's, I, I, it's three C's. It's content, commerce, and community. Content, Con commerce, yep. and community. Right. So, so you view everything. I'm batting a thousand when I use this model, right? Okay. Like I have not lost yet. And so if I have a business idea or a, you know, a company that we want to build, and inside Creativity Inc, we're launching more all the time. We, we go through and say, all right, great. What's the angle for the content, uh -huh. for the commerce, and the community? Because there's a lot of places. If you, there's a lot of great YouTubers out there that have right. a huge community and great content bad at commerce. Yeah. Right? Or you have people that are just like killing it on blogs, and they've got so much content. And then they've got some commerce, but they miss the other piece of the community. They don't loop well, right? And, like, yeah. and so getting those three legs to the stool really makes a difference um, for, for me. right? And so like the quilt company example... The commerce angle, we do a daily deal. The content, we have YouTube that we produce this content. And then our community, we have forums and Facebook groups that people go and gather in. Uh, so that when they, when they buy a thing, we teach them what to do with the thing. They get to share what they did with the thing. And like, it just sort of keeps going, it keeps this, this sort of cycle going. And people, I mean, that's kind of what they're looking for. They, they want to be inspired. They want to you know, be able to take the next step and make it. And then they want somebody to talk to about it. I love, love that concept, dude. The the uh, content, the commerce, and the uh, community. Because I, I totally agree with you that uh, a lot of people miss one, if not two, of those yeah. legs. And really when you miss one or two of them, you're kind of screwed at that point. And I can think of an easy one right now, which is like TikTok, yeah. uh, which we were talking about a little bit earlier, which is like you could have some great, great content on TikTok, but you have no way, uh, you could have zero way to really monetize commerce yep. that side of it and then your people really have nowhere to be a community uh, yeah. as they follow you minus they just follow you but they're following a ton of people no so you have an enormous content channel yeah massive right but, but they're not rich they're not killing it yet right? Right? Missing the two sides of it and I, I think the one that uh, it, even if I look at my own businesses that I've missed out on before is the community side yeah and there's something about that when and we're building one now and it's like it has this different energy about it when you have you create the content you have this commerce for them to be able to use build what they want to go do right that you're providing for them but then when you create a community that they can then go be a part of and they can go create stuff and show stuff and take act and give feedback to yeah. other people it, it creates this massive tribe well, well you know what i think is unique about it is it demands authenticity you can't farm yeah. out like you can't hire an agency to go build you a, a passionate community yeah yeah right like you've got to want it and be there yourself to do it and that's what that's sort of people gather around that and uh and so it's hard it's hard to fake and i think that's why it works i love it so uh so your answer would be content how to build a hundred million dollar company be content commerce and community Focus on those three things right there. If you if you have an angle for those three, like it's going to be hard to fail. I think. Uh, I love that. Now I want to talk about your new company. Okay. That you're on the verge of. Pretzel I Pretzel. 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 Dot io is the website. Oh, it's, yeah. it's the website. Pretzel. Dot io. Io. Yep. So not pretzel. Dot com. Pretzel. Dot. Yeah, pretzel. Dot com is just sitting there uh, doing nothing. That that was kind of pricey for me. And so <laughs> I was like, you know what? Io will be an app. It's great. So your Pretzel. Dot io, which is an app based yeah. company. Yeah, so we're a, we're a finance app, and the goal is is to help you see where your money goes. Right? I like, love this thing that you got going on with this one, dude. I I think it's I think it's super clever, just because. Uh, I mean, I, like everything I've done has sort of been focused on the beginner, yeah. right? Like quilting, make it accessible so that people that have never quilted can do it. Watercolors, same thing. And now to sort of leave the e-commerce world and the and the retail world and come into the finance world, 
you know, I, I hate every time I open an app and it's like, what are your goals? Yeah, what, stuff, yeah. What's your budget? Yeah, what's it, your, like, your outlook? it turns me off so hard because I'm like, I don't know. Right. I don't know what my goals are. Like, I just want to see where my money's going, man. Right. And so uh, we're building an app that, that itemizes all of your transactions and then talks to you about what you buy instead of the dollars that represented the things that you buy, right? Yeah. And so if you're, if you're a spreadsheet guy, you're probably going to always be a spreadsheet guy. My goal is not to disrupt that. But my, my goal with this is like if you use it and your spouse uses it and, and uh, gives you sort of this common vocabulary to talk about where your money went that month, everybody's life gets better. So keep running your spreadsheet, but like use this and, uh, and connect the dots on uh, over here. And like, you get to see where your money goes in a really cool way. And then we tell you stories about it week to week of like, you know, what, what your Amazon purchases turned into and how you, how many diapers you bought with this new kid and like all this kind of stuff that everybody's curious about, but we've right. never had the technology to answer yet. Yeah. I mean, I think one thing cool about it is that it, it has this social media kind of feel to it. Uh, built inside yeah. of this personal finance app, right? Where a lot of times when people hear personal finance app, even my brain it thinks of like TurboTax and yeah. you know all these different, all these tracking different things, and well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get a PDF report of yeah. uh, of a spreadsheet. Please no. And, and really, uh, as we were talking about it, uh, I'm just for a sake of illustration for the for the viewers right now, almost it has a, a, a small piece of Venmo like in it. Where Venmo, I sit there and I watch people of what they are paying someone. Yep. And it's like, oh, that's what my friend so-and-so is doing. My friend just did this. My friend just paid for dry yep. cleaning or whatever it is. And you got to kind of get to see this behind the scenes yeah. of finances that my friends are doing well, it's, um, uh, uh, mixed into it. Well, I, th I mean, I think that's uh, that's kind of the the serendipitous thing that comes out of here, right? Yeah. Is, is, that, is that it's a cool way to look at the things that you buy and the things your friends buy. I, I, I just, I do hydroponics in my basement. Okay. The internet retargets me as though I'm a weed dealer. <laughs> uh, it's actually strawberries, right? I'm, yeah. I'm growing strawberries down there. And, uh, and I got a bunch of other buddies that are into gardening and stuff. And so like, I, I went and built this whole cool operation and, uh, and ended up like typing out my receipt to say, this is what I got. You can go build it too. And like, here's this whole thing around it. Like, man, this should be way easier. Like, you should yeah. be, I, I should be able to group this. You should be able to see what I'm doing. And if I want to tell the story about it and share it around, like, this should be way, way easier than it is. And so just building a cool way to look at what you bought, organize it, and share it with others, I think, is a really clever angle on there that I'm excited about. Yeah, it's one of those ideas that, that you know, I get to interview so many people, so many business owners, and periodically someone will come in with a new thing they're about to launch, yeah. they're building out, you know, they just launched it, whatever it is. And, and it's like, dude, this could be one of those things that, like, disrupts the market of what's of, of how some has always been yeah. a certain way uh, I got a buddy that's doing a solar thing that is like so freaking like genius what <laughs> how he's doing this like total different outlook to it and ex again it's one of those things that could like go off and like revolutionize energy yep or absolutely go nowhere like it's just like <laughs> one of those two kind of things right and this is one of those things where it's like dude this app could really freaking take off well you think man you think about it if you could ever look at your credit card statement and actually know <laughs> You know, not have Amazon be purchased as shopping, yeah. right? But instead, it's Oreos and a T-shirt and a ream of paper, which all go in their own categories, right? Right. None of those are shopping. I think. Like the, I think the other big piece of it is like when you have the husband and wife arguments, because yeah. I think this is one of those apps that actually, because again, let's go back to growing up. I can't tell you how many like arguments I remember watching my mom and dad get into over finances. Yep. And it was always my dad was like. He, back in that day, was like a checkbook, you know, and he, and he would come home and my mom had written a check to ABC store, or whatever it was, Target or whatever. And all he saw was a check that left for one hundred and seventeen dollars and thirty three cents yep. and and lose his brain. Well, you talk about like the the relationship to money of that you know, fear and like it was the one that kept us from doing things. I mean, you get so there's this primal thing in us of like we got to protect our little thing. Yeah. And there's, uh, you know, if, if you got to run and buy diapers and wipes, that's not a bad thing for the family, right? That's, right. You, everybody involved would make that same decision. But when all you see is Walmart for $40, right. you don't know that you don't need to go red, right? right? You don't know that, like, you were on this side, too. You would have made the yeah. same decision. You're, you're for it. And, like, so much of that anxiety and stress around money can be removed if yeah. we just change the lens that we look at it through. And that's what we're trying to do with Pretzel. Yeah, because all of a sudden now it's like, you're not saying, why did you go to Target to spend $300? You're saying, oh, you went to Target and you bought these yeah, items? Exactly. Yeah, I would have got all those actually. Yep. Uh, we're on the same page. 
it, it, there's a lot of cool stuff is at pretzel.io. Yeah, uh, join, join the waitlist. So we're, uh, we're in beta right now and we'll let some people in, but uh, having a, dude, it's, it's it, if you think about all the finance apps out there that you've signed up for and don't use, right? Yeah. From, from Mint to uh, personal capital or whatever yeah, they yeah, are, yeah. right? Like all of them, you get in there and they just kind of suck. Yeah. And so, like, the, I mean, that's why I'm here. Let's build something that and, doesn't suck. And yours is not really about a retirement app. Is there a retirement piece to it? No, I mean, it, I don't use the word budget even, right? Like, because I, I don't, I, as soon as you exceed a budget, you've done a wrong thing. And, like, I, there's, there's no judgment in here. I can't, you can't, you don't want to show me all the things you've bought if I'm going to judge you. Right. And so, uh, I, I take it a step this way. It's more to, like, give you the tools so that if you want to run a budget, you can run it way better off of like using the data you're getting out of pretzel and so good go knock it out if you if you're not there yet like start here right like it's it's more the awareness and the courage that you need to even start is where i'm putting my focus again with the community tied into it yeah man like let's let's challenge each other let's talk about what we did let's have conversations around this stuff it's all there uh one quick one more question about it why why the name pretzel Uh, well, because if I'm ever at a trade show, I don't want to be throwing stuffed bunnies. I want to throw soft pretzels, right? Okay, like, that's, like, that's what you went with it? <laughs> you know, gather them in. No, it's, uh, it's uh, like, there's a lot of, I, I kind of picked it at random. Okay. Uh, but, like, there's so many good things around, like, I don't know, turn your turn your chaos into something delicious. And, like, the it's got a little currency symbol feel to it. I, I don't know. It's working out really well. I, no, no, I it's, like it. it it's funny because I, I always love asking people why they name something. Dude, naming a company is the worst oh, dude. part. Especially now, nowadays. It's the yeah. absolute worst because we, you try to go name it. And you're like, oh, this is a brilliant name. Then you got to go by the domain. And it's like, yeah, that was gone 19 years dude, I, ago. Well, <laughs> I, I started and I was like, money, money, money hawk. Yeah. Hawk money, fox money. Yeah. You know, you're like, this is stupid. Yep, Nobody yep. wants this. And then you got to start creating words. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. like the next level. <laughs> blink, blink, blink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you got to try to create some stuff. And then and then you start going into three words. No, and then you get a year into it and you realize this is the stupidest name. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pretzel is like, it's safe, it's done, we're there. That's our yeah, name. Yeah, move we, forward with it. We got the trademark, we're fine. And we're it good. is a good logo yeah. uh, uh, look to it. Um, yeah, talk to me about uh, YouTube for a second because... Uh, with content, one of your C's, yeah. uh, you guys have built a super successful YouTube channel. Yeah. And, it, and correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, the one for the uh, quilting one is really your mom Yeah, we on made, we, YouTube. <laughs> and your mom is like famous on YouTube yeah. uh, for quilting. Uh, so how, how do you go about building a YouTube channel? Well, so, so YouTube for us was uh, like, like it w- we needed a way to sort of put content out there. And a lot of people were blogging. Like in 2008, yeah. it was all about blogs, right? And, uh, and we saw YouTube as this idea that like just people wanted a quick answer to stuff. And, it, and my mom, like there's way better quilters than my mom out there, right? There's, they'll make like these masterpieces that hang in museums. And mom's like the fast food of quilting. Yeah. Like, <laughs> everything's a short because she was a costumer for okay. like the, our local theater when she was growing up. And so it's like, I can make you a Peter Pan costume no in problem. two minutes. Yeah. And so like that's kind of her approach in quilting is like, like let's make it look cool, but right. make it easy. And so it lends itself really well to uh, these video tutorials. And so I asked her, I was like, hey, would you mind doing a tutorial on the internet? She's like, what do you mean a tutorial? Sure, but yeah. what? And, uh, and so we started out, dude, I was, I was on the Canon Digital Elf, like manual <laughs> Zoom here doing this thing. Yeah. You hear me whispering in the background, <laughs> like, mom, move your hand. Uh, <clears throat> and so we, I mean, we just started off scrappy, but like, we started putting out these videos and we noticed that like as we would put these videos out it was the best way for us to get exposure to our our new products we we're getting in right you put it out there a thousand people watch it they want to make that thing they'll come and buy this this yeah. stuff so we liked the idea of it but then we we really struggled trying to drive eyeballs to youtube because i mean 10 years ago my grandma wasn't hanging out on youtube there's like the, the, our audience didn't exist there yet and so, uh, and so what we ended up doing is uh, we'd, we'd build this content, and then we had to drive our own views to the content. And then driving views to that YouTube channel drove, a, like, the recommendation engine and stuff. It kept driving. It was this great cycle that grew that channel more and more. So really the, the content was there to enrich our, like, newsletters and other stuff that would drive people back there and grow that audience. So in your newsletter, are you putting a video... Yeah, so so our, our newsletters get crazy open rates, right? Like uh. like back in the day, it was like seventy percent. Now it's probably like forty percent, but it's still 
they're insane they're amount, though. insane for if you think of a marketing yeah. newsletter but we always lead with this great tutorial that we've done and we put a lot of energy and effort into it so we make it really good and drive like my goal is every time somebody opens an email that we send their life is somehow better right right and so we our customers reward us for that they know that they're not going to open it and be like today only 20 yeah. percent off any coupon blah, blah, blah. you know and so like we we focus on really good stuff but but um the email goes out with with the tutorial and then we'll we we're actually i mean sales gets a bad rap but like sales at its purest form is actually helping people solve problems 100 and so we show them this tutorial and then if they want to make it we show them the products they need and it's all this very good feeling uh, stuff that actually drives revenue for us, right? And so as a business, we love it because we just have to treat our customers well and they reward us. Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a, a truth here that I think a lot of companies miss out on is that, uh, and almost in the culture that we live in, that sales has became this bad thing. Yeah, it's like thing. conning you into yeah, something, yeah. right? And I'm, I'm sure that exists. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but, but if you understand at the end of the day, your customer, your customer is following you, your customer is listening to you, because you can solve a problem for them. That's right. And if you actually, if you, what happens is, if you don't actually provide them a solution, meaning yep. ABC product, that they can buy that's gonna benefit them, help them, even, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be mugging or quilting or whatever, it doesn't matter. If you don't provide them with a solution, they'll eventually leave you. Because <laughs> they're looking for a solution. Yeah. And either you're gonna provide it for them or they're gonna leave you. Well, it's, dude, it's my biggest frustration with like, uh, you know, a Pinterest or something. Is you go and yeah. find that thing and they don't link. To, you're like, yeah. this is what I want. It's exactly the image I'm looking for. <laughs> now give it to me. And then you don't give it to me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you, again, you will, you will lose customers. People think, oh, I'm just going to produce content, 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 content. And, it, and, and you can do that for a while. But if you do not give them something to purchase that's going to fix what they're going through, even your content won't keep them. Well, well, I mean, every company should sit down and design sort of the customer journey, right? Like, yeah. great, they're going to come in, I'm going to tell them about a thing, and then I'm going to help them do a thing. And so maybe it's selling a product, or maybe it's selling a service, or maybe it's just like, I mean, if, if all your customer journey is is to tell them they're great, uh -huh. then like build that loop, but do it deliberately. Yep. Know, know where it is. And, uh, and I think, you know, most companies, if you sat down and went through that exercise, you're going to notice a spot or two that you aren't helping them. Yep, where you and can fix it. It's a big opportunity. Yeah. Go, go help them. Uh, any other, any other um, uh, hundred million dollar ideas you're sitting on right now? That you're harvesting Man, right now? I, Is your I'm, brain always kind of kicking around a different idea? Yeah, yeah. My wife, uh, my wife forbids me from trying new <laughs> things until I, uh, I see what I'm doing through. And and uh, but like, <clears throat> I, I, dude, even. It's funny because as I go through any activity, I'm, I'm seeing it. Like hydroponics, I mentioned it, right? I was going to say this morning, we were doing AC sports. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You, you, I mean, they literally came up with probably a $100 million idea <laughs> on, like a, on a whim. Uh, we had never met before. And we just started talking, to, talking about it. And it's like, holy, sh this could be really <laughs> freaking like, big yeah. uh, idea. Well, it's, it's everything. As soon as you can notice that, that bottleneck, man, you're like, yep. we've got to fix, fix this problem. for the world. Fix the problem. Fix the problem. The, the hydroponics one, man. I wanted to grow strawberries. And, uh, and they're like... You get you try and get into this, and everything's so sciencey. It's like the pH balance needs to be yeah. here, and the this needs to be here. And I'm like, freak! I'm not, I'm not this. I yeah. don't know. That. Uh, give me, sell me the bottle with the strawberry on the front. <laughs> I want to pour it in and do it. And so I'm like, there's a part of me now that I'm staring at this, saying, man, I bet, I bet there's a bunch of people who want to get into this. If I can make it easier and solve some problems for them, I bet they'd love it. And, and get so, totally into it. You know, it's it's stuff like that that I just I write down in my little notebook. Yeah, yeah. I'll circle back someday. <laughs> Let me ask you this because uh, I want to ask you about a struggle with entrepreneurship, yeah, uh, and uh, I think a guy perhaps like you, um, do you struggle with, you, you have this idea, or you see a problem, you begin to fix this problem, build this business, do you get tired, do you grow tired and weary of that business, and you want to go do this new thing over here, and let this keep running, let it grow, put somebody else in, into it, and, and I, I have struggled with to the point where I have literally like sometimes closed down a business because I'm like, eh, I'm tired of that. I don't want to do that anymore. Even though it was yeah. successful, it was growing, it was making money. But I just, my brain was like, I want to go do this new thing over here. Do you struggle with that? Uh, yeah, that's called ADHD. <laughs> and, uh, no, There's think, a medicine for it. I think a lot of people do. Um, the, my, my, thing, my thing is, uh, you know, it's, well, it's weird because I think at the beginning I always did, right? Like I've, uh -huh. I, I wasn't starting one company, I was starting three. Right. And we we're gonna try and keep them all going. And, uh, and at the stage where, where you sort of make your, your money, you've had, you've had good success, I think my, 
my my trade off now is I'm like I could just be sitting on a beach. Right. Why am I doing this? And so you actually have to have a, a really solid why as you go in there. Um, <clears throat> I mean, otherwise, otherwise I just can't talk myself into sticking around. Yeah. Right. Like this finance app, there's a real chance that I that I make finance accessible for a generation of people. Right. That otherwise would be terrified to look at their bank account ever. Right. So I'm like. All right. If I spend a decade working on that, th that's worth my time. I, I can do that. But and so I, I uh, you know I'm I'm past the stage where like I just get bored of it and l and leave. I'm too picky now uh -huh. on stuff I do. But uh, but I definitely still have that. You know I, I find myself manufacturing stress where it's like <laughs> I didn't even have to do this. Yeah yeah. What am I doing here? This is really hard. Would you consider yourself? I I just the piece that I know you. I would, I would look at you and think that you're a massive like visionary. Yeah, uh, in business, uh, which is kind of the boat that I put myself in. Like I'm, I'm always on a visionary side. Do you struggle on the management side uh, of business? I, I, I think I, I think I do a lot, right? Like I, I struggle with. Um, there's a, there's a lot of gaps between me, and, uh, and like, I don't know. So some of the other roles that'll come in immediately. So Pretzel is a great example where like if, if it's, if it was just me, and Mick, our CTO developer guy. Uh, that builds all this stuff, right? Right. Like there's enormous gaps in there, and so I had to round that team out really fast so that we could have like product and the design and all the stuff that helped kind of take my vision, the mm -hmm. thing that I'm like super passionate about and new ideas all the time, and distill it down into like, great, here's the next milestones we got to hit, yeah. And uh, and we can all be successful. And, and knowing that about myself, I'm actually really quick on the draw now of like, great, we can't. It can't just be me and you building right. building the next company, man. We got it'll be me and you for a couple of weeks, but we got to really quickly fill in the gaps where we yeah. have them. I think it's a big, big, big lesson I always learn. I, I had to learn, and I think it sounds like you learned it as well. Was like, there's only so much uh, that I can I can go do, uh, and I got to fill those gaps in quick uh, well, with staff and someone well, who when, actually is expert at that. When you grow a company, man, you start out and you're 26 and you're the CEO, which doesn't <laughs> yeah. mean you're the CEO that's also shipping orders, right? right? Right, right. And then you become the CEO that's the manager, right? And you're managing a few people. Then you become the CEO that's the director that's managing manager. But like, as by the time you get to a CEO that's actually doing executive work, right? You've had no training on how to do this. You have no idea. And so like, you shouldn't feel bad too that that uh, you kind of suck at that. <laughs> but you got to go and backfill it in. You're not going to on the job train yourself how to be a great CEO and never have any other inputs like go take some classes go sign right. up for these programs and like go get a therapist and a coach and all, put the people around you that are going to help you level up your your uh, skill set because it doesn't just happen accidentally yeah i totally agree like i want to talk to you about pretzel because uh back, back up just for a second because one of the reason i love it is because pretzel and like money is have pieces of similarity in the sense of it's about just having a conversation yeah. of freaking about money. Like money is this taboo topic yep. that you can't talk about. You're Sex and money, man. About, the, right? the off limits. Completely yeah. off limits. You're not allowed to talk about them. And and I would even say money is even more off limits than sex is yep. in, in, in our day and age right now. Maybe in the past it wasn't, but I feel like today in, uh, sex is more yeah, openly no, that's true. talked about yeah. right, than, than money is. And the whole money of show is about just having an authentic conversation about it. like if you want to learn about it, you have to talk about it. Yeah. You cannot learn about any subject if you're not if you refuse to even talk about it, right? <laughs> like you just want to get in a closet and read this book and then never mention it to anybody. Yeah. You gotta have these conversations. And I love Pretzel because it kind of stimulates and creates that platform where people can have conversations about money. They can talk about money yeah. uh, with other people that are in the same boat, that, you know, that they're in. Uh, and money is we talked about it for. You also mentioned your why. Which, which the whole reason I did the show was that you've got to know what your why is in this business yeah. or in a business. And if not, there's too much heartache, man. There's too many battles. There's too many stress points. There's too much risk. You will find a reason to get out of it quick unless you have that pure grounded reason of why you're doing it. And it's funny because, you, and not funny, but it's unique because you're talking about pretzel and immediately you're like, oh, I could change a generation of money. Like you knew your why. Without me, you know, no one even asking you about it. You knew why you're doing pretzel. Yeah. Because it's not that you have to. It's that no, dude, I could change a generation of money uh, for people, and that why is so clear. So I'm gonna uh, bring out the, the sign for you. I'm gonna ask this question for you, uh, which we got an incredible photo of you <laughs> uh, uh, back in the day. Got a nice beard going yeah. on here. So uh, I want you to put the answer in here. Whatever it is, one, three, four, whatever any words it is, you put it in here, and then sign pretty big right through here. And then me and you can have a quick conversation uh, about it here. Whew. 
Ooh, money is, um, let's see. <laughs> this is gonna be. <laughs> this is going on the wall. You got the chicken scratch there. Uh, um, okay. All right. I love it because uh, this is my favorite parts of the show, because I get to see if there's a new definition. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, sometimes people use the same answer, uh, and this is a brand new one. No one's ever used this one before. Uh, so his answer is money is a placeholder. Uh, if I read that c yeah. correct, right? Yeah. A placeholder. Ah. Uh, all right. So money is a placeholder. Uh, very, very unique. Uh, I want to get your definition. What does that mean? Money is a placeholder. Well, I, th I think I think uh, money gets too much credit. Right? Okay. Um, and and uh, you know, money money man, money is just a yeah. It's a placeholder for for nouns and verbs, right? Okay. Like the things that we do, the things that we turn it into. I think is what's interesting. What tells a story about us, right? Money is money is a, a dollar number. Uh -huh. I don't know, it's kind of a dumb thing to worry about. Yeah. And so it's, you know, yeah, yeah, I, I think I'd stand behind that. That's like defensible. placeholder. Are you saying like uh, it's a placeholder in the sense of money is a placeholder, like um, keeping score to a certain degree, like like um, it, it's just it's just holding my place into what I what I what I have over here. Or it's just a placeholder in in the sense of it's a placeholder of these things that I do with my money. And the money is just a placeholder that's that's holding this place until I exchange this money for a new car for my I, mom. I think I think it's the latter. All right, okay. I'm I'm not keeping score with money okay. because uh, you know once you get past a certain, if it's I, like I'm hillbilly rich, right? If I, make, <laughs> if I make another million dollars tomorrow, nothing changes in my life. Yeah. And so uh, you know as we we spend a lot of time and energy talking about money. Right. When, when really what we should be talking about is the things we turn that money into, yeah. uh, whether it's helping other people or whether it's helping ourselves or making our lives better, or like having fun, you know, whatever it is, it's, it, I think money's, money's a crappy lens. I got right? you. So like, let's, I see it. Let's I see what you're saying. Like money there. is a placeholder that uh, is just there. That dollar amount is just there as a placeholder until you can do what you really want to and get what you really want to out of all that yep. time, energy, effort that you spent, right? As a business owner, you spend time, energy, effort, risk, emotions, all this stuff you spend to go produce. Uh, and money is just uh, a placeholder that we use until we, re until we re replace it with what we actually wanted. Yep. What I'm willing to trade my time for. Yeah. Uh, meaning I'm not willing to trade my time for a lot of, I'm not willing to trade my time just for uh, a, p a piece of paper, uh, like money. Yep. What I am willing to trade my time for is uh, let me take my entire family to Florida for New Year's. Yeah, does it create an opportunity? Does it yeah. create an, yeah. And, yep. it, and the money is just that placeholder for it. It's a great freaking answer. Uh, <laughs> and it's the first I ever gave uh, on that answer. I'm so ashamed you had to hold that handwriting on my mother. Mom, <laughs> I am so sorry. I should have taken a minute. Uh, you should have written a little bit slower. <laughs> I forgot it's permanent. I yeah, <laughs> it's permanent marker right there. It's going to be on the wall forever. forever. I'll send a picture to your mom. Uh, I should be super proud of the schooling that you got in, in, yeah. as a kid growing up. Yeah. Uh, look, guys, uh, Money is Show. Uh, great, great episode here with Al. Uh, you guys make sure you get his app, uh, pretzel.io. Yep. Uh, it'll be coming out uh, right around the corner. Um, and then if you're into quilting, dude, this is the this dude, is the guy. <laughs> come play, man. Come make your make your uh, your Hajj to Mecca. Yeah, we've got a town. It's like 26 buildings out there. It's we, crazy. It's it's something to see. If you if you're into fabric or crafting <laughs> or watercolor, come visit us in Hamilton. Now, if they want to follow you directly, they want they want to get some yeah, knowledge from Al. Come Where can follow they go? me. I'm Dr. Bill Nye on Twitter or Instagram. Dr. Bill Nye. Listen. He's a great, he was a great guy back yeah. in the day. I really liked him. He taught me how to make a hovercraft, and I thought he needed more credit. <laughs> so uh, that's so you're, <laughs> you're literally at Dr. Bill Nye yeah. is your handle there on Twitter. Which one do you go on more, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook? Uh, probably sitting on, probably sitting on uh, Twitter the most. Twitter the most yeah. right now? Uh, at Dr. Bill Nye. Uh, is your uh, handle there. You guys follow Make sure you again hit pretzel.io, get that app. We'll see you guys next week on The Money Is Show. Thanks, Drew. Thank you.